Hey guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. I'm here to answer a viewer's question today. It's potentially actually quite a simple one, but you know what, when you break some of these simple questions down, they turn out to be really quite complicated. So I can give you a simple answer in like two minutes, but I'm gonna give you a bit of the science behind it. Okay, what is the question? So Beden71 said I raced triathlons, but I ditched my TT bike for a road bike because I love it better than the TT bike. What's the difference between a TT bike to a road bike with or without aero bars basically on speed on the course when is one faster than the other? And I would just simplify and say, can a road bike beat a TT or tri bike? Now in this presentation, I might say TT or tri bike. Yeah, there is a difference. Triathlon bikes are generally made for slightly longer distances. They may not follow UCI rules. They may have inbuilt hydration. You know, there may be subtle changes in the geometry. But basically, I'm going to say TT bike and triathlon bike are basically the same kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that versus the road bike, yeah? And if you go onto YouTube and you just type in TT or road bike, you get a lot of comparisons here. And I actually remember back in the day, like nearly four or five years ago, one of the first videos on our channel was which is faster, the TT or road bike on a local course that I rode in similar conditions. Totally unscientific, I have to say, but nevertheless quite interesting to compare the two. So I guess what we're talking about here is what is changing between the road bike and the TT or tri bike. And I guess what I'm going to say, I'm going to simplify it now and save you the job of watching this whole video and say basically the TT or tri bike is nearly always faster except in five special situations. And they are as follows. Basically, if you're not used to riding the TT or tri bike and your position is bad on that bike, you're always getting out of position. You're not on the extensions, you know, you're, you're sitting up and you're, you're stretching, you're resting, then yeah, your position is going to be inconsistent. And remember, your bodily shape, your body is basically two thirds or more of the aero drag compared to the unit of body and bike. So the bike could be said to be one third, body two thirds, just as a rule of thumb. It depends on your speed, obviously. Second situation is if it's very steep, if it's mostly steep climbing, your road bike significantly lighter, then yeah, the road bike probably is going to have a gain. Now, where is that crossover point? It depends. And actually, it's a very subtle difference. I'll come back to that in a few minutes, actually. Similar to the ascent, if the descent is very steep, basically dangerous, treacherous, and you're not confident riding on the TT bike, then you'll probably go faster on the road bike, won't you? And that's another situation where the road bike's going to be faster. And if that's a big part of the course, then fair enough. Fourthly, if your power on the road bike is significantly higher, i.e. the power is compromised on the TT bike, then maybe the aero gains will not overcome the power losses. But in fact, it's normally the other way around that the aero gains do prove to be a benefit even if you do have a drop in power let's say a few percent and that's why it's important to train on the tt bike in a tt position at least in the off season for some of the time not just a week or so before your tt or try event particularly triathlon when you're going to be in that position for a long time so training the position is key now there is one last special situation where the road bike is not necessarily much slower and that is when it's a drafting event like a normal road bike race normal road race then you can draft so you know there's very little gain to be had riding the tt bike not to say the tt bike is also pretty dangerous in that situation so in a drafting race road generally will win you can also sprint harder on the road bike when it comes to the sprint final However, listen to this, even in a triathlon event where it's draft illegal, i.e. they maintain some kind of drafting distance, you'll be surprised how much you can actually draft, even with, let's say, a 12 meter draft rule. That's exactly why Patrick Lang had such an advantage in Kona last year, because he was following his teammate Andre Dreitz, wasn't he? And that was a significant gain for him. Andre Dreitz basically sacrifice some of his race to allow Patrick to do so well. Now, I'm not saying Patrick cheated because he followed the rules. He followed the 12 meter rule, although I think he did get a warning. He was getting too close. But what I'm saying is 12 meters still get you a significant watt saving at a fast speed. And no one's doing anything about that. 
he seems to be okay. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens this year in Kona, where Dreitz is basically out of the race and uh, Lang will have to do his own thing or use the advantage of 12 meter rule with someone else, I guess. So I guess I could summarize all that and say, if your position is the same, the gradient is basically the same. It doesn't come into play in terms of your skills, either up or down. That your power is the same on both bikes and it's strictly no draft with probably the same wheel set, let's say. Then no, a road bike won't be better. It will be slower and you're nearly always better off choosing the TT or triathlon bike. Phew. Okay. That was actually the short version. Now, if you're bored and you want to leave, fine, give me a like or share. But if you want to stay around, I'm going to give a giveaway or a link to a giveaway at the end of this video. Okay, now let's get into the science, guys. Now, how to do the science? Well, I'm going to do it real quick with the aid of the Boardman Wind Tunnel. Here's a quick visit to the Wind Tunnel with two bikes, a road bike, a nice road bike, versus a TT or tri bike. Yes, clothing changes and wheel changes, so I'm going to take that into account. I'm going to choose an unusual distance here of 20 mile race. So my timing is based on a 20 mile or 32 kilometer race. And I'm going to work out the speeds for several different types of rider. Let's start with the high end rider, 400 to 430 watts. So what do we find? Well, if we were a pro outputting 430 watts, then your speed difference would be, well, 45.7 kph or 41.6 minutes on the course versus 37.8 minutes on the course or 49.6 kilometers an hour on the TT bike. And the difference is mainly in drag because the aero drag is 341 on the road versus 338 on the TT bike. Okay, if we ramp it down to 300 watts, then the speed differential is 39.7 kph versus 43 kph on the TT bike. And at 250 watts, it's around 37.1 kph versus 40.2 kph on the TT bike. So there is a clear differential between road and TT. That is a zero gradient going along under ideal conditions tested in the wind tunnel, okay? Now, if you thought this was all theoretical, then you're wrong because you may have heard that Gustav Eden snatched a surprise victory from the knee 70.3 medium course triathlon event like world triathlon he actually won it in no short order because he was on a road bike and he did an amazing road bike ride in that nice course now we can snatch the profile of the nice course from any number of riders who uploaded their strava activity on the day and it's a very climby course in fact, this rider here, Duarte Pace, thanks for loaning me your data, shows that it's very, very hilly, 44% climbing, 34% flat in terms of time, and 21% downhill. In fact, really, in terms of course, it's about a third of each, a one-third climbing, one-third descent, one-third flat. In fact, we can break it down into individual gradients if you want to with the use of Elate, which used to be called Stravistics, which is an excellent add-in tool. So what we can do is quickly model the speed of a rider, let's say the same rider on two different bikes, let's say 250 watt, 70 kilogram rider, let's say a road bike versus TT bike. So should we call the road bike 7 kgs versus TT bike 8.5? Let's say they've got Zip 808 wheels on both and we've got aero bars on the road bike. So it's very comparable. Obviously, the um, triathlon rider might have different, you know, skin suit or whatever. But let's kind of equalize that and say that their CDA is not that different because of their clothing. So what we find then is if we model the knees course, like in terms of profile, it goes up nearly a thousand meters in 26.6 kilometers which actually is an ascent of about 2.4% on average and a descent 3.4% on average if you really study the course profile. So if we map that in to our calculator, or if you want to do it a different way, get our best bike split, it'll do basically the same thing. Then what we find is that 0% on 0% grade on the road bike, that ride is going 38 kph, but on the TT bike, they're going 38.4, i.e. 0.4 of a kilometer per hour faster and they will save 30 seconds over the 30 kilometer flat section of that race 
What about on the ascent? Well, on the ascent at 2.4%, the road bike's going up about 27.3. And it's almost exactly the same time as the TT bike. So there's no saving to be made there. And on the descent, minus 3.5% grade, the road bike's going 54. But the TT bike with rider, of course, is going 55.1 which is actually around one kilometer faster downhill, which could save a significant chunk of time, maybe up to 70 seconds. So I actually make it that there's between a 70 and 100 seconds gain. So between one and two minutes gain using a TT bike over a road bike on this course. So how come I've just talked myself around to saying the TT bike's faster? Well, basically, it's the difference between theoretical and real life. This can never be ignored. Because if you look at the footage, you'll see a number of factors come into play, including course knowledge, technical descent, technical ascent, and some kind of drafting in like overtaking and that 12 meter rule being somewhat pro draft anyway. So bottom line here, guys, actually a very complicated equation and one that's not purely mathematical. The real world does come into it. And the ultimate answer is yes, in some situations, a road bike does beat a triathlon or TT bike, but it has to be exceptional, unusual conditions. And that, I guess, is what they got in that Nice 70.3. And kudos to Gustav Eden for that breakthrough win. I think he's the youngest ever winner at that course. So kudos, guys. Okay, guys, I finally returned to my promise of a giveaway and I'm going to direct you to the link below, which is actually a link to our Strava channel. If you go to our Strava channel and look at our last post, you'll see that there's a post for a giveaway and it's a choice of cycling gloves, cycling socks or USB bike light. And if you happen to be a Patreon subscriber and happen to win this, you'll get all three. So guys, enter our competition by following the rules on that page, which is basically just giving us a like or share to this video and then posting a comment on this page and also our Strava page. You'll be automatically entered into the competition and I'll contact you if you win in our draw, which will be in approximately two weeks time. All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next video, which is coming soon, which will be about shoe flexibility and power transfer. Basically, what makes for an efficient cycling road shoe. See you around, guys. Until next time, Coach Alex signing out.